Building a Lemon Battery, presented by Tim Lyons. The power of citrus. Last week, we saw how yeast can trigger a violent decomposition reaction in hydrogen peroxide. This week, we're going to conduct another experiment with common kitchen items. We're going to create a redox reaction in a common lemon. In other words, we're going to make a battery, a lemon battery. Here are the supplies we're going to need. A lemon, six zinc nails, six copper clips, a piece of rubberized wire, some steel wool, and something to set on fire. So what is a redox reaction? Redox reaction is an oxidation reduction reaction, and it involves, which involves a transfer of electrons between two species, such as um, uh, uh, this reaction between iron and carbon. So iron plus carbon produces iron and carbon dioxide. In this case, the iron takes four electrons, right? So it gains four electrons through the reaction, and it is therefore reduced. The carbon, uh, the carbon loses four electrons, and therefore it is oxidized, because oxidation is loss. The reason we're talking about redox reactions is because this is the type of reaction that powers a battery. What is a battery? It's one or more cells in which chemical energy is converted into electricity and then used for power. A cell refers to an anode, a cathode, and an electrolyte that's used to produce a voltage and a current. In a nutshell, a battery is two different metals suspended in an acidic solution involved in an exchange of electrons and ions. A good example of this that we see in the book is a galvanic cell. This demonstrates the essential parts and inner workings of a battery. In this, you have zinc on the left, which is the anode. And as you can see, it is attached by a wire to the, uh, to the copper cathode on the other side. So electrons are being lost by zinc and taken up, so lost by zinc and gained by copper in this reaction. Meanwhile, um, uh, several different types of cations and anions are being exchanged through the salt bridge or through some sort of porous material that uh, separates the, the two half cells from one another. So this is how we're gonna create a lemon battery. First, we're going to stick a row of six zinc nails into the lemon, making sure they're not touching one another. Then we're going to make a parallel row of six copper clips, about one half inch apart from the nails. Then we're going to use wire, connecting nail one with clip two, nail two with clip three, and so forth. Then we're going to attach a piece of wire to clip number one and nail number six. Clip number one will be our anode and nail number six will be our cathode, and it looks like this. So you can see up top, I have my row of, uh, uh, I didn't get copper clips, I got really thick copper wire, and used those as my six basically copper nails. And on the other side, I have uh, zinc nails. And in between them, I have a uh, wire that I got um, from my, uh, uh, painting hanging kit. And then uh, down at the very end, the anode and the cathode, I have a, a piece of uh, rubberized uh, copper wire in between them. So this creates a battery that produces about uh, half a volt of electricity as seen in the video that I used to make this. And I would have a video here of me starting a fire if this had actually worked. Uh, unfortunately, my lemon battery did not work I blame it on the uh, zinc nails, which I believe had some sort of coating on the outside of them. It said on the package, these are zinc nails, but uh, they, don't, they don't have uh, the same look as the nails that were in the video. And uh, something's not working here. It's my guess that it's either that 
or it's the wire that I chose to use to connect these two parts, perhaps that's why um, uh, maybe those wires are not good for conducting electrons from the copper to the zinc. In any case, unfortunately, my experiment did not work. If my experiment had worked, this is what I would be explaining to you about how it worked. The zinc nails are the anode. The zinc is reduced, taking electrons from the copper. The copper clips are the cathode. The copper is oxidized, giving electrons to the zinc. The citric acid in the lemon acts as the electrolyte, or like the salt bridge that we saw in the uh, galvanic cell, right? And it allows cations and anions to flow through it towards the anode and the cathode. These are the, the chemical formulas that are taking place in this reaction. So um, uh, the a, a solid zinc is producing zinc ions plus two electrons, um, and this generates uh, a negative uh, 0.76 volts of uh, resistance, right, or of uh, potential. The copper, uh, so a, a copper, an aqueous copper ion plus two electrons is generating copper or producing copper solid copper and that is generating 0 0.34 volts the citric acid in the middle as we said is acting as the electrolyte um, allowing the the free flow of um, ions between the anode and the cathode and therefore allowing the process to keep going the total energy produced by this process is the uh, the cathode minus the anode. So 0 0.34 volts minus negative 0 0.76 volts gives us a total charge of 1.10 volts. Now, that is the ideal uh, uh, the ideal potential energy of this system. However, as I've put into the asterisk footnote down at the bottom, um, these are just ideal voltage. The, the, the actual minimum cell voltage for a lemon battery, or the actual maximum cell voltage for a lemon battery is around 0.5 volts to 0 0.9 volts. And in the case of mine, apparently not even 0 0.5 volts. In closing, redox reactions um, involve the transfer of electrons. Batteries are cells in which redox reactions are used to produce voltage and current. A common battery design consists of two metals in an acid solution, an anode, a cathode, and an electrolyte. Citric acid in a lemon is a strong electrolyte and makes a good base for a battery.